Dr. Neville specializes in treating patients with the condition adrenal fatigue that often goes undiagnosed. Adrenal fatigue can leave people feeling chronically tired, stressed, and sore. He explains how his methods have helped many regain control over their lives and get back to accomplishing their goals, but this time without the burnout. So are, uh, do you yourself have adrenal fatigue or was it a family member that uh, like made you aware of it and want to study it? Yeah, so I, I realized I had adrenal fatigue you know, way back in childhood, but I, I started having some problems um, really in, in high school, but then it really surfaced in college where I started getting, you know, I was really laid out for weeks, um, a couple times, a couple months on end, um, and some anxiety th issues that I didn't really know was anxiety at the time, um, blood pressure issues even. And, and I went to my infirmary uh, in my undergrad and they didn't really have any answers. They weren't that good. And so I searched around, but I wasn't getting a whole lot of help. Um, beyond college, I started, um, I started pursuing more natural medicine because conventional medicine really wasn't wasn't helping me out. Whether that was you know chiropractors or um, you know acupuncture, nutrition, things like that. Mm. It was a chiropractor who actually mentioned naturopathy to me, mm. which I am. So I'm a naturopathic doctor, and I had never heard of naturopathic mm -hmm. medicine. I mean, yeah. you know, I grew up in kind of suburban New Jersey. Uh, I wasn't hugging trees or anything like that, <laughs> right? So so it was new to me. <clears throat> so once I learned about naturopathic medicine, <clears throat> sorry, once I learned about naturopathic medicine and the philosophy behind it, which is all about, you know, treating the cause, right, and prevention of, of disease, things like that, I was all in, right? So my desire for answers took me all the way to naturopathic medical school. And even there, I was being treated by some of the best naturopathic minds around, um, but nobody was really figuring it out. They were mm -hmm. chasing after some ancillary stuff, like it was my Epstein bar that kept getting reactivated, or my food allergies, or my irritable bowel, or my uh, anxiety, whatever it might be. It was in the library while I was at my med school, I discovered my predecessor's book. Uh, the original version was called The Adrenal Syndrome, and he rewrote it in 2000, uh, called Chronic Fatigue Unmasked 2000. Uh, and that book ultimately just changed my life, hmm. right? I, I was opening, looking through the book and it was like, it was describing everything I was going through. It was amazing. So with the book, I was able to kind of get my, my feet back under me while I was in med school. Um, you know, I came uh, to work with Dr. Posnecker, did a residency for him. Mm -hmm. And since he passed away, took over for him working on, you know, trying to help people with this really kind of invisible, so terribly misunderstood condition, you know, trying to get the information out there and trying to get, get people back on their feet um, as well as they can. So yes, I would say, you know, I had adrenal fatigue, um, but I do pretty well by myself right now. Uh, now I just have to ask, cause it like sparked my interest, but the food allergy thing, did that go away once you um, realized like what you had? Because I have food allergies, that's why I'm asking. <laughs> it did. It oh, did. Wow. And, and the way I poke at patients or doctors, I drive doctors crazy because I'm always asking why. Like, okay, you have food allergies. Why? Like, why is your immune system attacking food? Your, your immune system's there to, to take care of things that are harmful for you, right? Like bacteria and viruses and parasites, things like that. That's what it's designed to do. Mm -hmm. Why on earth would it attack food or the environment for that matter? Mm -hmm. Well, so your immune system must be kind of out of control to a degree, right? It's mistaking mm -hmm. friend for foe. And so then we go, okay, so my immune system's out of balance. Well, why is your immune system out of balance? The number one reason for that, for or, or the number one control module we have for the immune system is actually our adrenals, which is, and adrenal fatigue is a, it's a poorly understood condition. Mm -hmm. It's basically a dysfunction within your entire stress response system, which includes your adrenals, right? Your adrenals produce all the stress hormones, but there's a bigger system that gets dysfunctional ending in the adrenals. And, and what happens is when with a bit of a genetic predisposition, like you all know of, it seems mm -hmm. with a genetic predisposition and enough chronic stress over time to overwhelm those genetics, our stress response system becomes dysfunctional. What happens is we start, we start shifting our physiology too much into stress physiology, right? Fight or flight, 
you know, fighting tiger kind of physiology, right? Mm -hmm. And and at the same time, we're kind of suppressing this other bit of our physiology, which is uh, rest and digest, um, you know, vacation mode mm -hmm. kind of physiology. Mm -hmm. Well, your immune system's over here, right? Because when we're fighting tigers, like we're not, you don't want to pay attention to inflammation, right? Mm -hmm. Or some chronic illness or whatever, right? Forget about that, conserve mm -hmm. energy, deal with this threat, right? Mm -hmm. Do that once in a while, it'll save your life, right? But you do it all the time. Now you're going to compromise your immune system and, and mm -hmm. also the digestions over here. So when you compromise the immune system and the digestion together over time, you create this perfect environment to develop food allergies. Same mm -hmm. thing with me, you know, 20 years ago when mm -hmm. I did my testing. <laughs> that makes sense? Yeah. No, yeah. yeah lately, everyone. everyone just yeah. looked at me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, food allergies, but I'm happy to report I can eat those foods now, right? Mm -hmm. Because, and, and a lot of people will go after these food allergies, right? Whether it's not really mainstream medicine, but, you know, integrative doctors, alternative doctors be like, okay, yeah, of course you have IBS, you have food allergies. And yes, the food allergies will make your gut weird, but it'll cause other reactions as well. Um, so they'll identify the food allergies and they'll take the food allergies out, right? But if you don't fix this underlying physiologic dysfunction, mm -hmm you're still allergic, you're gonna develop allergies to even the new groups of foods you're gonna eat, mm. right? So I, I've had people chase after those food allergies forever and they'll come in to me and they're like, doc, I can eat four foods. Mm -hmm. Or one woman, I can eat chicken and broccoli and that's mm -hmm. it without having a reaction. Right. Because we're not fixing it at that deeper level. Right. Hmm. Right. Well, how is it different that, like, how do you, sorry, now I'm like super invested. <laughs> <Now she's> like, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> um, how is uh, anxiety and depression different than adrenal fatigue then? Because, like, yeah. I, some of those signs that you're saying are common in anxiety and depression. Yes. Great, great question. Mm -hmm. So, with, with adrenal fatigue, right, which is really a dysfunction with your stress response system your physiology gets stuck in fight or flight, right? So when you're dumping that excess cortisol and adrenaline, right? Those are your stress hormones. That leads to predictable symptoms, right? And everybody will have some semblance, maybe not all of these, but you'll see chronic fatigue, pain, weight, sleep issues, brain fog, anxiety, depression, blood sugar problems, and blood pressure problems. Those actually start out low, but eventually they can go up. Mm -hmm. Every one of those symptoms, even if you go to conventional research, right, and you look at their research on depression, let's say, there'll be a little paragraph right at the bottom that'll say, oh, by the way, chronic stress can cause this. Mm -hmm. They just don't know what to do about it, mm -hmm. right? So what we do is we, we say, okay, anxiety is anxiety. It's a thing in and of itself without any attention to the underlying cause. Same thing for depression, right? So they'll give you you know, take this for your depression, take this for your anxiety, take this for your sleep, take this for your weight, take this for your brain, whatever, right? And mm -hmm. if you're lucky enough to pick the right drug, you might cover up the symptoms so you don't see it, right? Mm -hmm. But, and that's not easy to pick the right drug either, like that's a dance. Right. The thing is, you might cover up the symptom, but you haven't fixed this underlying physiology mm -hmm. and this underlying kind of excess stress hormone over time continues to create tremendous wear and tear on the body. Mm -hmm. So, so using, and I'm not against using meds for this, mm -hmm. but only chasing symptoms and using meds or even herbs or whatever, it's like kind of putting a piece of tape over the check engine light in your car. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, you might not see it anymore, but you haven't fixed the problem and it's going to kind of get worse over time. So, and it's not that true anxiety and true depression doesn't, doesn't exist. Like those things exist, but what we tend to do in, in medicine, unfortunately, is if, if we look at somebody and we can't kind of figure out what the underlying cause is or what the problem is, it's kind of amorphous. We tend to psychologize things and say, oh, it must be, you know, there's nothing, nothing on my blood work must be in your head, must be, let's call it depression. And, and here's the thing, you can take somebody, like if you ask, one, you ask a person with depression one question and you could tell whether they have what I would consider true depression or adrenal fatigue or chronic fatigue. I mean, it's got all these names, right? One question. What would you do if you were better? Somebody with true depression, they can't answer it. They'll kind of vacillate mm -hmm. and they'll dance around. They'll be mm -hmm. like, well, maybe mm -hmm. I'll do, nah, I don't know. Like they, they, right. 
You ask somebody with adrenal fatigue, what would you do if you're better? Mm-hmm. I mean, you better have an hour to sit back and listen right. to this long list of stuff right. that this mm-hmm. person wants to right. do, right? Because there's this underlying cause, mm-hmm. right? And, and when you treat that underlying cause, over time, I see all these symptoms I just rattled off, mm-hmm. they tend to decrease in intensity, mm-hmm. frequency, and duration over time as we fix this underlying cause. Right. Mm-hmm. So I guess what does that look like to actually fix all the issues? Because I'm, I'm sure it starts with your diet and your gut. Um, but is there, I mean, if you want to speak on that. Well, there's this big magic pill that I developed that I can give everybody. <laughs> I wish. I wish. Wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> right. So, so there's no magic pill, right? But there is a methodology, right, built on Dr. Posnecker's work for 30 years prior to me doing this in 20 years of, of me doing it and trying to kind of sharpen my saw with mm-hmm. regard to this. What we have to do is figure out for each individual person, like what is your therapeutic puzzle look like, mm-hmm. right? And everybody's is a little bit different. I mean, there's some commonality, right? But everybody's is a little different. So the job that I have with patients is figure out what does that therapeutic puzzle look like and how do we put enough of those pieces of that puzzle together all at once to get this physiology to finally shift. Mm -hmm. And diet's one of them for sure, right? But I don't even start with diet. Hmm. I start with lifestyle. Now, lifestyle's a big one, right? Because Mm -hmm. the way I look at stress is maybe a little different. So let me explain that in that we only have one stress response system, okay? And we talked about your adrenals, but it starts in your brain. We've got this limbic system in the brain, And then we've got the hormone side and the nerve side of our stress response that ends in the adrenals. What that means is that system has to deal with any and all stress. Mm -hmm. So we all have, I picture it like a bucket, right? We all have a certain size bucket of tolerance for stress, right? Mm -hmm. Half from mom, half from dad, there's your bucket. Some small, some big, you can overwhelm anybody's bucket if you throw enough out. Mm -hmm. But this bucket wasn't designed for the stress we have today. Right. This bucket was designed for like old school stress, like hardship. Right. You know, give me a good old fashioned famine or a plague or a predator or something, right? The, that bucket would fill up all at once. We would jump into fight or flight and right. kind of deal with whatever it is, right? And then if we survive, that bucket would drain back down. We'd shift out of fight or flight. So we turn off the wear and tear. Right. We turn on the healing and repair. And we live to fight another day. We don't have stress like that these days, mm-hmm. except for this plague thing, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. But for these days, we start filling up this bucket from a very early age, right? And any and all stress goes into the same bucket, mm-hmm. whether it's physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, social stresses, um, diet and nutrition, toxins in the environment, surgeries, bad infections, accidents, injuries, especially head injuries, because the limbic system in the brain gets rattled and that gets trigger happy, but anything relationships and finances and politics and competition, right. And, you know, overachieving it, like it all goes into that same bucket and it's as that bucket fills up, right. That, that we start developing those problems. So what we have to do. So that's basically your life, right? Your life is in this bucket past and present. One of the things we have to do is is we've got to try to create space in this bucket, pay attention to what's there, what's controllable. But what we can also do is heal the stress response system itself. And what that does is make the bucket bigger, expand the bucket Mm -hmm. to your kind of greatest genetic capacity. We create space. Now the next thing that comes your way, you have tolerance to, and you don't get mm-hmm, stuck right. in fight or flight. We can start to loosen this thing up. Right, mm-hmm. right. And and I just would like to say, too, you know, when you think about people who are equestrians, I mean, they push themselves. I mean, we're the Hard. people, come off your horse, get back on. Right. Don't stop. You know, you're tired. Keep on cleaning the stalls and make sure you, you know, grab the horses, mm-hmm. bring them in, turn them out, get ready for competition. You're tired. You've gotten all your attack ready. You have to leave the next morning to go. You know, you're trying to pack mm-hmm. everything up. I don't think people realize sometimes, you know, how much they're doing. And then they start to get tired because um, I've worked with Dr. Neville now for, I don't know, since I think 2016 maybe or so. Yeah. So when yeah. I hit the wall and couldn't get any help... 
and and you just, can't ride like no. that's the thing that that's you don't want to carry your saddle you, no you, know. you, can't, you, you can't understand how you could even get out there to right. even think about doing it right. that's why we're talking about this because right. we, we as equestrians do push ourselves we push so hard. so hard you know and we expect ourselves to just keep on going we don't tell everybody you know what we go through how right. you know, we wouldn't dare tell anybody that we're right. tired but that's where we hit the wall so I think for equestrians this is so helpful because sometimes we don't realize what we're doing but um Working with Dr. Neville and sticking to it, you know, I went for a while, thought I was pretty good. You know, I'm back again working with him. The the, the changes are, I mean, great. And I can, as a testament to what he does, I just want to say, you know, there's some people wonder, why am I so tired? Why do I feel sick? Why is this? Why is that? You can find that relief, but it's finding it through the right things. And after myself personally going to many, many doctors and trying to figure out what was going on, nothing helped until I finally started to speak with him and then get, you know, this help of figuring out what to do. And there are multiple things that you do do that help so much, you know. And um, is it, does it sound like something sometimes people will say they just can't? fathom what you're telling them because it sounds so crazy first of all that yeah. you have these symptoms and then secondly how to help those symptoms so i think it's hard i think people have to open their minds up to it if they're not feeling good because i can tell you how much of a difference it makes mm-hmm. yeah so. yeah so i mean you touched on a, on a couple great things and i appreciate those words but the um people who develop adrenal fatigue mm-hmm. tend to be cut from the same cloth mm-hmm. Right. We tend to we tend to care. Mm-hmm. Right. Maybe we're a little more sensitive mm-hmm. as well, like to our environment or, to, you know, to, right. but we we care about things and we care about what we do. And yep. because we care about what we do, we do them things well. Right. And then and then people uh, come to us to do things because we do things well. So that mm-hmm. feels good. Right. So we mm-hmm. get pats on the back and we, mm-hmm. we keep doing things well. And then we, we can become a little overachieving, we push ourselves pretty well, right? Mm-hmm. We become even perfectionist, a little mm-hmm. type A. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, lazy people don't tend to <laughs> develop adrenal fatigue. Like they're not filling up their bucket, right? right. People right. with adrenal fatigue, we, I mean, we tend yeah. to be really yes. good at filling up our bucket no yeah. matter what that is. Mm-hmm. Um, and the whole idea of pushing through it, right? That kind of old school philosophy, yes. which that was the message I got growing oh, up yeah. too. Mm-hmm. It's the absolute wrong advice to give somebody if they're dealing with adrenal fatigue. <laughs> yeah. It's the exact opposite, right? It's yeah. giving the body, you know, the rest and care that it needs right. to be able to heal and recover. Right. Um, and it's a, it's, it is a tough concept for people because a lot of us, you know, we've been raised, I was just having a conversation with one of my coaches. We've had multiple generations that where we've been raised with kind of the germ theory and this idea of, you know, one drug for one disease, mm-hmm. right? You have depression, here's an antidepressant, right. depression gone. Mm-hmm. Well, it ain't that simple, and it really isn't. Mm-hmm. So there's some kind of relearning that has to happen with yes. regard to this. Mm-hmm. And the concept of, it's I don't like the name, like this is a stress response system dysfunction. Mm-hmm. I don't like that name because people, it's kind of trite, right? Everybody has stress. What do you mean? Stress mm-hmm. can cause my hypothyroidism, right? I need my thyroid out. Stress mm-hmm. can cause this severe debilitating fatigue. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. if you talk to PhDs who study stress, a hundred percent, yes, mm-hmm. but we don't really, we don't really get that, right? It's, it's tough. It's, it's kind of tough to fathom that, mm-hmm. but absolutely it's correct. And, and in order to correct that, we've got to, you know, we've got to shift right. this physiology and you've got to do it in this holistic way. Right. Um, at least that's the only way I know to do it, right? right. Like you can't just use some some pill or some mm-hmm. herb to to fix right. one of these things. Right. Um, you want to address it as the whole. And part of it is going back to what you just said, Debbie, is that, um, you know, we've got to try to give ourselves the freedom and the permission right. to slow down, right? right? To slow down, to take a break. Right. Not completely. Right. I mean, you guys, you, you're all kind of athletes, right? With regard to this. So you're good at pushing yourselves yep. and, and kind of driving yourself. Yep. Right. And you've probably seen, I don't know about yourself, but you've seen people get burnt out, mm-hmm. right. They go through burnout. I, I imagine mm-hmm. it probably happens in animals as well, yeah. where even though you're doing the same things, right. Your gains, right. Mm-hmm. Start to decline. Mm-hmm. And that's this kind of the same thing, right. It's, it's 
overdoing the stress that you're putting on your body mm -hmm. from an exercise standpoint. Mm -hmm. You want to push yourself right for optimal function. But if you push yourself beyond that, your function tends to go down, mm -hmm. right? Then the mm -hmm. same is true. The same is true for stress. Mm -hmm. So part of it is, you know, part of it is learning kind of what's going on and, and how to, right. how to work with this and address it. Um, there's a very specific way people with adrenal issues need to eat. Right. Mm -hmm. So I talk about diet quite a bit with patients and that's mm -hmm. not just necessarily the food allergies, but you know, the number one job that your adrenal gland has is to actually control your blood sugar. Mm -hmm. That's the main thing it does. And, um, and it's a constant stress, right? So every time the blood sugar drops, your adrenals have to release some stress hormone cortisol that goes to the body, tells it to release a stored form of sugar into the blood. So you don't pass out from low blood sugar, right? Mm -hmm. Which is bad. Mm -hmm. if, if my patients can then eat a diet that prevents their blood sugar from dropping, that's a big stress or a big job that we're actually now scooping out of the bucket without paying attention to anything else, right? Mm -hmm. Now we're starting to create some space. Mm -hmm. So this, that's basically a hypoglycemic diet, which is mm -hmm. what we what we tend to push. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. And I think two people with their horses, they have something that they love and they enjoy, um, which is really nice when you love and enjoy it. But sometimes when it becomes like um, when people are in he heavy competition, that type of thing, or, um, you know, you, animals you take care of, you know, every day, doesn't matter, every day out of the year, you know, you have to take care of them and you push so hard. Sometimes we just don't know when to stop or slow down a little bit or how to do that. So then, you know, what we've talked about too is sometimes you have to get a little help. Sometimes you have to say it's okay to have somebody else step in and help a little bit so you can take the time to get yourself back to where you need to, you know, because it does take time to do that. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. so I think going along with that, yeah. what tips do you have for slowing down because like Gretchen and I we're pretty young and so you know I feel like there's just like the thought process of like oh we're young we can do it we can work hard you know and just having that mentality but they're even having issues yeah like when you talk right. about the genetics our entire family so we hear from old um, to young my my cousin <laughs> when we were younger had Epstein-Barr my um, mom's sister's yeah. daughter my mom's sister you know is having issues like issues. Uh, this is all normal to all of us here that we have these issues and, mm -hmm. and yeah. Ida is um, getting married and and she her you know boyfriend at the time came in he's like I've never heard of anybody having this many problems in their family with allergies and <laughs> you know Food like allergies and, and blood sugar your, dropping you know, the whole time. Family. I'm tired and I have a I don't have mm -hmm. a thyroid anymore and like all of yeah. these things and it was so I think, like for us, we were kind of like it's just normal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like we just. It's amazing. It's pushing. amazing what you can get used to, right? Mm -hmm. uh, right. It's, yes. it's incredible. And, and I, I first read about the genetic issue when I talked to Doctor Po, or I, it was actually in Doctor Posnecker's book where he talked about genetics. And I started, so I looked around my family, right? I looked at my mom and my dad. My dad, no, not really. My mom, sure enough. But she developed symptoms probably 20 years later than I did, right? So if I was 20, wow. she was 40, right? Okay. Yeah. And then I had my daughter at the time who was not barely in school, and I looked at her, and she already had some of my yeah. same tendencies, hmm. yeah. blood oh, sugar nice. issues, See? all yeah. that kind of stuff. So it, this stuff starts in childhood. Mm -hmm. um, and, and there are definitely things oh. we all kind of need to do. One of the things... So, so largely it's about balance, right? Mm -hmm. I have patients, I use this term in my, in my practice called functional capacity, right? Mm -hmm. And that goes anywhere from zero to hundred percent. Obviously none of my patients are hundred percent, right? And I have, I have a range. Well, somebody who's functioning at like 30%, they can't do very much, right? Mm -hmm. Yet life still calls and they might have to push themselves. When you push yourself beyond your capacity, that's where you see symptoms. Well, let's say we, you know, get started, we're working, they go from 30 to 40 to 50%. Well, now they can do more. Mm -hmm. So they do, right? But again, yes. if they push beyond capacity, yeah. they have symptoms again, right? So then we have to renegotiate. So at every kind of level, it's, it's about striking this balance between doing and not doing, yeah. right? Between stress physiology and the opposite, like vacation mode, rest and digest, mm -hmm. right? And it's tough because yeah. <laughs> everything in life just about pushes us towards fight or flight stress physiology, right? Mm -hmm. 
it's also, this is our body's default is to go towards fight or flight. Like our limbic system, that's its job. Limbic system is not a thinking part of the brain. It's just a reacting part of the brain. One of its main jobs is to constantly be assessing our environment for danger. And it receives information from the senses and perception, receiving that information, receives information from kind of our in, inside of our body with chemicals and the blood supply. When it receives this information, it's got to make this judgment, reaction, not a thinking part of our brain, but is this stimulus harmful, mm -hmm. dangerous? Can this kill me? Do I got to jump mm -hmm. this body into mm -hmm. fight or flight, mm -hmm. right? Well, it's doing that on purpose, right? This, this limbic system's not all that evolved, right? It, it's, it's still of the era like that we were living in the plains of Africa, being stalked by lions. And, you know, the more hypervigilant you are in that situation, right? And this even happens for sensory nerves, get hypervigilant like that, right? So I see patients, they've, they're kind of sensitive to bright lights and loud sounds and harsh chemicals and smells even touch sometimes well mm -hmm. the more hyper vigilant you are if you're being stalked by a lion mm -hmm. the better your chance of survival right you want your pupils to dilate your ears to be hyper acoustic if you can smell that lion the better your chance to get out of there well mm -hmm. we don't live in the plains of africa anymore where i guess it's pretty calm most of the time except for that occasional lion right mm -hmm. we live in the world we're in now right which is fast-paced yeah loud yeah uh, I mean, toxic, right? With chemicals, mm -hmm. competitive, stimulated, yeah, right, yeah. obnoxious. So now this upregulated, right? This overstimulated, it's, it's just being yeah. bombarded at left and right. Yeah. So we have to do everything we can to find the opposite. Mm -hmm. And nature is one of those, right? Nature is one of those. Animals, horses, mm -hmm. of course, are going to be one of those, right? And the idea of nature. So I'm always pushing nature on patients and. Again, I didn't grow up that way, but I learned um, how important it is because when we experience the natural world and we're very present, like you could be grooming your horse, right? right. And you could be thinking about the competition you right. have next week, right? Which is not going to shift this physiology. Or you right. could be grooming the horse with intention and with presence, right? Paying attention to exactly what you're doing, being yes. very mm -hmm. present. Yes. Right. And that's an entirely different experience when you turn on this opposite side of your right. physiology. So the idea of nature is really crucial, but being extremely present, yes. you know, within nature itself. But I guess to go back to your question, Ida, it's about balance, right, is, is really a key thing, trying to find this balance, which is not easy in today's mm -hmm. world. Um, and then listening to your body, because your body will guide you, right? It really will. I tell all my patients, Listen to your body because your body will never lie. Yeah. Your mind, however, will lie at the drop of a hat. So <laughs> my body often wants dessert. Um, <laughs> We're pretty honest here, you know. Yeah. Um, Fair enough. <laughs> Yeah, I will say when I when I was pregnant like, with her, all I wanted were pancakes and like, dessert, and I wouldn't no. eat dinner. And that's not me. That's <laughs> not me. chocolate peanut butter pies. No. <laughs> yes. So, so, so anybody, go ahead, right? Anybody, and I was the same. Right. Um, anybody who has adrenal problems has a weird relationship with sugar because, again, the adrenals <laughs> the adrenals control your blood sugar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like back in the day, I used to convince myself I liked tea. Right. I drink tea with my with my mother. Um, when I was younger, but you could literally stand the spoon up in the tea okay. with all the sugar I put mm, in that yes. tea, right? Yeah. Like really? it was well, the sugar I that I wanted. That <laughs> so it's, so it's uh, common, yeah. um, sugar and salt are two big issues with mm. regard to the adrenals. Yeah. Um, salt, you can have sugar. You have to be a little cautious. With. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. So well, <laughs> you were talking about the magic pill. So I'll just tell you my experience with how I learned about adrenals and, and things like that. Okay. Uh, we, I took the magic RAI pill to remove my thyroid. Mm -hmm. So I was having all the symptoms. Um, and mm -hmm. when, after six weeks, or I think it was after, I think it was like six weeks of, I don't know how long it was waiting. Um, they gave me the medicine, you know, to, what is it like the, um, I'm trying to think of which one, what is the one that you take the, 
Synthroid? Synthroid? Yes, yeah, Synthroid. Oh, you yes. know, and they yeah. said, this will do it. This is your magic pill. You know, take this and you're going to be good. For well, thyroid. Yes. Yeah, to take for my, it. Yeah. yeah, for my thyroid, right. for the removal right. of my thyroid. Correct. So I, I took the pill and it wasn't working. And we tried to work around and, and you know, add some things in and, and it, it, it still wasn't working. And... At the end of the six weeks, I said, this this isn't working. You know, like, this isn't, I, I'm tired. I can't even get off the couch. I could barely get here, mm -hmm. let alone, like, I can't, I can barely get dressed. Right. I can't, I mean, I'm, I'm it was real. I unfunctional mean, it's real. Right. at this point. Mm -hmm. sure. And I said, is that, you know, I've, I've read, I mean, I started studying online and looking at things, and I read about adrenals. And as soon as I said the word adrenals, my doctor was like, you're, that's it. We're done. I'm not talking to you anymore. And I was shocked. And I, I went home hopeless. Like, I just thought, I, he said, you're one of the 5% this doesn't work for, and I don't know what to do with you. And uh -huh. I went home, and I was so, so, so sick for so long. And then I uh, got in with a natural doctor who mm -hmm. helped me and got the right uh, medication for me. And it's a, you know, more natural one. <laughs> that I use along with like a uh, levothyroxine or something, one of those. And I, I do so much better now. I'm still not optimal, but you know, like we're, we're trying getting to get there through. and trying to, but trying I think it's through. just the thought that like, why do you think doctors, and maybe they're, maybe this is changing, but if a doctor tells you that's it, I'm, I'm done. Like I had to keep searching cause otherwise it wouldn't have been good for me. But I think we just get told no so many times and then you're like, well, there's nothing they can right. do. You feel there's no sure. help. Yeah. Sure. So, um, yeah, the, so the biggest problem with adrenal fatigue is exactly what you kind of just walked into, which was is the misunderstanding around it. Conventional medicine, they are taught that as long as your adrenals are functioning at all, okay, as long as they haven't completely failed, which is a disease called Addison's disease, it's pretty rare, but it exists. As long as you your adrenals haven't completely failed, they're fine. You can't have, again, this is what they're taught, you can't have a more subtle problem with your adrenals if they haven't failed. Now, nothing could be more further from the truth, but that's what they're taught. And if we look at this logically, it doesn't even make sense, right? Because if you think about the rest of your endocrine system, right, you think about your thyroid, think about your ovaries, well, you're allowed to have a thyroid problem short of complete failure. Mm -hmm. You're allowed to have an ovarian hormone problem short of complete failure but not your adrenals. As long as your adrenals haven't completely failed, they're fine. Mm -hmm. And again, nothing could be further from the truth. Mm -hmm. So if we, if we leave, but that, that's just what they're taught. Plus it's, right. you know, they consider it like a fad and, and all that stuff. Like they would much rather treat the symptoms, right. Mm -hmm. That I mentioned, right. Mm -hmm. That's a whole lot easier or, you know, go after some of these secondary dysfunctions mm -hmm. like the immune system or the thyroid or whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. Now, and I will say that when the adrenals go south, they will drag down the thyroid and the ovaries, right? And I can I can even talk to that if you want. But let's say we leave conventional medicine, which is exactly, exactly what you want to do, right? Uh, maybe that's a blessing that they kicked you out and you were able to find care, right? Because that person wasn't going to help you. Mm -hmm. And that is true um, with the vast majority of conventional docs, especially specialists. Mm -hmm. So we go to alternative medicine. And you, you will find doctors that believe in adrenal fatigue. They might even test for it and find it. But what I've discovered is that they've kind of just grabbed hold of a tail of something that's way bigger than they anticipated. Mm -hmm. Because again, the adrenals are part of this much bigger system that they forget, right? The adrenals produce this, that cortisol and adrenaline, like definitely that's an issue. And, and I give that hormone a bad rap all the time, right? Because of all the damage it causes. But it's life saving. Like we wouldn't be here without that hormone. You just want it in, in this kind of sweet spot, not too high, not too low. Mm -hmm. But the adrenals don't decide whether or not to release that hormone, right? So if there's an adrenal problem, there's got to be a problem with whoever tells your adrenals what to do. So we look at the hypothalamus and the pituitary, they control the adrenals. They also control the thyroid and the ovaries, which is why they go south. So there's that hormone side. Then there's a nerve side of the stress response system as well which I don't want to kind of get too deep into the weeds. And then the limbic mm -hmm. system is like the CEO calling the shots. What, what, what most docs are, don't kind of realize and pay enough attention to is that when you treat all of that, that whole stress response system itself, including the adrenals, the whole thing, that's when you can start to shift this physiology because 
when we're here, not only are we creating these, these symptoms from wear and tear, but there's four main organs that you suppress when you're here. Immune, digestive, which we talked about, right? Mm -hmm. Immune, digestive, reproductive, thyroid. Mm -hmm. And again, that'll save your life, right? Don't waste energy uh, digesting and absorbing. Don't really want you to right. have a bowel movement right now. There's a tiger, right? Yeah. You'll be dead. Same thing with the reproductive hormones, right? I don't care about your periods, yep. your sex life. Don't really want you to procreate right now. You'll both be dead this time, right? Mm -hmm. And the same thing with the thyroid. We know, and we don't talk about this. I actually didn't even learn this in med school myself, but we know that that stress hormone, too much, goes to the hypothalamic pituitary thyroid hormone axis and it suppresses it. Hmm. It just flat out messes with it, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. and, and if you do that once in a while, it'll save your life, do it all the time. Of mm -hmm. course, now you can compromise these systems and you can start to have some problems. Mm -hmm. It most... Um, integrated doctors, they'll identify the thyroid issues and say, oh, well, the, well, yours is not that hard. You don't have a thyroid, right? So that's an issue. Um, they'll say, oh, your thyroid's a little off. Let's support your thyroid. But trying to fix these systems while your body is still here purposely suppressing them, mm -hmm. it's like trying to push a car that has a parking brake engaged. Mm -hmm. I mean, you get enough behind it, you get her to go. But mm -hmm. It's a whole lot easier yes. to release this break. And you release that break by treating the entire stress response system dysfunction, right? Mm -hmm. Get this physiology to shift. And that's where you can start to manage and, and kind of get back on your yeah. feet in a consistent way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, as I'm listening to this, like what are some like red flags that you should go see a doctor for this? Mm -hmm. Like what are red flag symptoms that you should go see a doctor about this? The two, yeah, the two earliest signs of this where I'll, because I'll talk to patients, right, as their, as their bucket fills up, right, that bucket of tolerance, the physiology will shift a little bit and, and you might see some of these symptoms, right? The body complains a little bit. But in the beginning, it's not that bad. Like we can still push through it or maybe we get medicated or we self-medicate, right, with some coffee or sugar or alcohol or whatever we might do, right? But but as that bucket fills up, the stress response system gets a little more trigger happy. And then it kind of keeps building up until there's yeah. that last straw, mm -hmm. yeah. right? Whatever that may be. And that could be anything. It could be a toxic exposure, um, some like a car accident, mm -hmm. a head injury, uh, you know, a death or divorce or whatever. That last thing that really, really kind of throws things off, yes. right? Mm -hmm. And that last thing gets a little distracting, right? For both patients and for practitioners. Cause it's like doc ever since menopause or ever since that second mm -hmm. baby or whatever it is. Right. But again, that's the tip of the iceberg, right? There's a whole lot going yeah. on underneath. And I think back to myself when I'm talking to through someone's history, we'll talk about those things and those traumas from a symptom perspective, the two earliest symptoms are warning signs that I know this person has adrenal problems and they have the potential to get themselves in trouble. Mm -hmm. Low blood sugar, okay? So a tendency towards hypoglycemia and low blood pressure. Both of those are 100% controlled by your adrenals mm -hmm. and they should be seen in medicine as a warning that these adrenals, we should pay some attention to that. Mm -hmm. Now, I always think to myself, you know, I wish I caught this earlier, right? Mm -hmm. I would have had so much time that right. I could have saved, yeah. right? But yes. then I think, would my 20-something self have listened to my 40, 50-something <laughs> self nowadays? Like, would I have listened right. to those early warnings? Right, right. Because probably not, right? Because we're humans, and, and I find that humans don't really change yeah. unless they're motivated enough, yeah. enough by pain and discomfort. All right. Right. And I needed to be motivated enough right. by pain and discomfort to make some changes and, mm -hmm. and get back on my feet. So but those signs, a little low blood sugar, low blood pressure. But anybody like you, you look at people. I mean, how much anxiety is there in the population? How much mm -hmm. depression? Mm -hmm. How much chronic pain? Right? Right. I mean, number one cause of disability these days is depression. And I'd say probably 90 percent of that full on. Is this has this as an mm -hmm. underlying cause? I mean, it's, it's everywhere. Mm -hmm. 
So, <laughs> a lot to think about. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's a lot to think about. It is. But that's so good because a lot of people don't understand. You know, it takes all of the, this explaining to understand it. But once you start to understand it, you go, oh, well, maybe that mm -hmm. is. Yes, I do understand now. I do know why I feel that way. And there's help. That's the thing before yeah. it goes too like far. The, you don't have to be hopeless. Like if I wouldn't no. have gotten help and I just would have stayed with what I had heard, even if you get like a doctor's opinion, it's always good to get a second opinion regardless. I mean, it's always good to have those and you need to keep going until you can figure out. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what led us to, you know, doctors like you where they really do care and they understand these things. And it's important to find those things. There's so many people who can and can you know just go the normal route and it's working for them but if anybody has this going on and to the point of where you can't even get on a horse anymore go out to the barn you can't think you about feeding the horse to the barn it, that's how True. bad we no. like some of yeah. us have been mm -hmm. yeah. not, not everybody's there and you know everybody no. the people that are listening right. you may not be there but if right. there's signs of those things it's good to you know Here. start with that now and do those things now like as young as Gretchen and Ida are they both have had some pretty uh, stressful things that have happened to them I think probably mm -hmm. due to these things like Ida broke out in hives and we couldn't figure out what yeah. I mean her for whole body months. for yeah. months her whole body yeah. broke out in hives and they kept putting me on like tons of steroids and that was making them worse yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. what they do right, right. But again, yeah. right. that that allergic tendency right is going to come from an, an uncontrolled immune system right that's where you're dumping all this histamine you know so we just kind of we kind of assume that stuff in in this and the, uh, I mean, you want to, you got to control hives, right? Because those are horrendous, mm -hmm. right? Do whatever you can to modulate the immune mm -hmm. system. And there's some natural stuff you can do for that. But again, it, when you fix this, yeah. right? When you, when you fix this underlying physiology, you kind of lose that allergic tendency, that reactive tendency. Mm -hmm. um, so you want to do both, right? I'm not saying ignore this stuff. Right. Like if, if somebody needs their thyroid out, they need their thyroid out. Mm -hmm. Let's get them on thyroid medication right. and let's, let's use the right thyroid medication for that particular patient. Right, right. Let's treat the patient, not necessarily their lab results, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. But it's almost impo impossible to even dial in thyroid meds if somebody still has this active adrenal mm -hmm. problem because that's gonna mess with those levels as well. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just a bit of a different way of thinking as far as thinking is why. But dealing with this at this level, um, I mean, it takes responsibility. Right. Like, yeah. yes. like I, when I'm treating patients, I treat them with this kind of hierarchy of intervention. And I start with lifestyle and diet, knowing full well, that's the hardest stuff. And that's what conventional medicine pretty much ignores because it's hard to get people to make some of those changes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. And if I build, if I go up that hierarchy, I'll use, you know, general support and treat some symptoms and, and, you know, supplements and herbs and hormones and way at the top of this hierarchy are drugs and surgery. I'm not against drugs and surgery, right? They're, they're mm -hmm. necessary at times, but if, that, if that's the only tool in your tool belt, you're going to be a little limited as to what you can do. Now yes. I'll treat everywhere on that continuum. I spend most of my time at the base because when you work at this base, the, the interventions are cheaper, they're safer, right? They're longer lasting mm -hmm. over time, but they're a whole lot more, a whole lot harder right? Yeah, they yeah. require a whole lot more responsibility from the individual yes. patient. So people need help. Whereas, you know, it's pretty easy to pop a pill, right? Mm -hmm, but yeah. more expense, shorter acting, more side effect, adverse reaction, but a whole lot less responsibility, right? Because mm -hmm. you You're know, building a foundation. Yeah, yes. correct. You're building yeah. the foundation. Exactly right. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah. To the point where eventually you don't need these higher level right. interve interve interventions because your physiology has shifted, right? So the ultimate goal for me is always shifting this physiology because if we turn off the wear and tear and we turn on the healing and repair in your body, the body knows how to heal itself, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? It's been doing it for thousands of years, mm -hmm. but it's not going to do it if it's shut down, mm -hmm. right? We just got to shift that physiology, right. turn that on, mm -hmm. and then you can kind of walk away. Right. And I think for people who are... Um, active in, like you said, the caring people, the, the overachievers, people like that. I, my problem is, is that I'll go along so far and then I just, I'm back to those old habits or whatever. I need that consistent, like, um, continual, you know, talk to me, tell me, remind me because, oh, 
yep, that's what it was again, you know, and it takes, uh, it takes a lot to change. Well, and I was going to ask, you said lifestyle is the first thing that lifestyle and diet and equestrians Mm -hmm. are typically pretty active people. Um, So if you have someone who's like an active person who does eat well and is still experiencing these symptoms, where do you go from there? Yeah. Yeah. Well, again, lifestyle is, is kind of everything in that bucket. Right. And I have a lot of patients in my practice who are highly trained athletes, Mm -hmm. right. Especially distance, right. Whether it's, you know, former gymnasts or marathoners or triathletes or whatever, because that level of intensity of, of competition, of, of training, right. You have to train in an ordinate, you know, better than I do, right. In an ordinate amount of time to be able to get to that high Mm -hmm. level, that's a lot in your bucket. Right. Mm -hmm. And there's other stuff in that bucket too, right. There's work and school and relationships and, you know, I mean, life, right. Right. Life is in that bucket too. So if I've got somebody who's active and active is good, I'm not against exercise in any way, but we have to acknowledge that exercise is a stress. Yeah. It's good stress. You want to stress your muscles, right? And they break down and they build back stronger. Your heart, same right. thing, right? But if you've got somebody whose bucket's full and you add a stress to that person, it, it could be too much. So a lot of times I am kind of backing people down on exercise a little bit, um, you know, trying to have them not push too much, that, that kind of a thing. Mm-hmm. So we pay attention to the rest of what could be in that bucket, Right which could be, again, a lot of people have a healthy diet, but they might not be controlling their blood sugar with that healthy diet, right? Mm-hmm. So let's let's get to that, right? Mm-hmm. One of the other bits of this is actually salt, which I alluded to earlier. One of the other jobs the adrenal has is to help you to hold on to salt. And in the body, water follows salt, right? It's like osmosis, basically. Mm-hmm. So, so if the adrenals are weak, we can't hold on to salt, which means we can't hold on to water. Mm-hmm which is why my patients sometimes will urinate more frequently mm-hmm. than the average person. Um, it can also affect blood volume and make the blood volume low and blood pressure low at times, even make us lightheaded, like if we stand up too quick. Mm-hmm. But what that means on a deeper level is that people are chronically dehydrated, mm-hmm. not just superficially, but dehydrated at a cellular level. And when mm-hmm. cells are dehydrated, they don't work. Mm-hmm. They won't heal, they won't repair. So one of the things my patients need to do is actually eat more salt, Yeah, believe it or not, right? Yeah. Get a healthy salt Good and salt. use salt right. on the food, right. maybe mm-hmm. even make an electrolyte right. with, with regard to this mm-hmm. salt. Right. Because these are, this is a job, right? Controlling your salt and controlling your sugar, that's a job that your adrenals have every minute of every day. It's a constant stimulus. So if my patients can control their salt and sugar by how they consume them, those are two stressors we can scoop out of the bucket, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, so I know there's not a good answer for this. So um, I'm just going to say. What you're going to ask anyway? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah go ahead. Yeah. Um, so I guess, and this is going to be different for every single person because everyone's different. But I guess um, what I wanted to know is like how. I guess what lead time is there for seeing results? Yes. Yeah. You know, like, is this like a, a kind of a, a year question. or, and I know it is depends it like, on like how much effort goes like, into it's this. It's a loaded and, question. Yeah. Do you get your shipping yeah. in, in the next day? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, I, I knew where you were headed because yeah. uh, I've had hundreds of people say that. I mean, you can't answer this, but I'm like, okay, this, you know what this it is. This is the how long is it going to take? Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. So when, when I, I, I treat patients a couple different ways, but one of the ways is I put people through this program that I that I've developed for this. I want to see incremental improvement within the first four to six weeks where people are starting to feel better. The healing from this condition is unlike healing from any other condition. You, you haven't broken a bone. You haven't. It's not an infection that's right, gone. Right. It's not even like cancer that you can cut it and now you don't yeah. have it anymore. Mm-hmm. Right. What healing looks like is symptoms over time decrease in intensity, frequency, and duration. Mm -hmm. But what that means is at three months, my patients still have symptoms. Mm -hmm. Again, a little less. At six months, they still have symptoms. Mm -hmm. Less still. Mm -hmm. Nine months. 
12 months. I mean, they go away eventually. Mm -hmm. It just takes time. But as long as the symptoms are decreasing in intensity and frequency and duration over time, people are getting better. At the same time, I see my patient come back, right? They feel like their old selves with increased intensity, frequency, and duration over time, whether that's cognitive function or mood or energy in general, right? But again, it's kind of incremental. So within, I want to see some change moving in the right direction. And I kind of celebrate these little small victories, right? To keep people on it, but within four to six weeks, but again, it's incremental Mm -hmm. program that I want. I run, um, is it's basically a six to 12 month program. Um, nobody's fixed in six months, Mm -hmm. but they should be better. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. It's even rare that somebody's fixed in 12 months, mm-hmm. but again, they should be better still, mm-hmm. right? So if I've got somebody functioning at 50%, mm-hmm. now they can function at 60, 70, 80%. I mean, 80%, you can do a whole lot more and you mm-hmm. can get a lot done and you feel a whole lot better. Are you fixed? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Technically, no, right? Mm-hmm. So I'd say if if this is done correctly, and you're right, there are a whole lot of variables because mm-hmm. I mean, how good can you be at not pushing yourself so much? How good could you be at establishing a practice of a consistent relaxation exercise to stimulate that rest and digest healing physiology, right? I mean, all this stuff is variable, right? But on average, to get people back on their feet 12 to 24 months if we're if we're doing everything pretty well. Mm-hmm. Not perfect. You don't have to mm-hmm. be perfect. Mm-hmm. But pretty well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the difference of being, you know, when at first being just feeling like you're sore all the time for me, it was like I was sore all the time. I I just was so tired all the time to coming to a place where, you know, it's it's better. I'm not there yet, you know, but Mm -hmm. is is significant to see the changes, you know, and that's the thing I think that people can once they start to see a little bit of a change, which you do. Um, yeah. it's, it's, it's very, you know, it, it makes you feel really, really good to know that there's hope, you know, there is hope because sometimes we feel there's no hope with mm-hmm. it, you know, of course, so, of course. and yeah. it's subtle, right? It's subtle in the beginning. Yeah. So you do need, you know, we all kind of need some of that encouragement. Like, ah, oh, that's right. a, that's a really good sign. Right. right. And, mm-hmm. You know, I love what I do because when at the level that we're treating, right. To me, it's one of the most basic levels of health that we could treat because mm-hmm. we're, we're fixing our, our whole physiology essentially and bringing it back into balance where now we're turning off kind of the wear and tear from stress physiology, turning on the healing and repair physiology and actually repairing the mechanism that controls the responsiveness of this system. Mm-hmm. And when you shift this system, now you're putting your physiology in a, not only do the symptoms go down and you feel better, you're putting your physiology in an anti-inflammatory state consistently, Mm -hmm. an anti-cancer state Mm -hmm. consistently, right? Mm -hmm. Because you're turning on the Mm -hmm. healing and repair that the body knows how to do, Yeah. right? None of that stuff is happening when it thinks it's fighting from fighting tigers, right? Right. Now you're in an anti-aging state. So you're optimizing physiology on so many levels. Mm just by fixing this at at this deeper, Mm -hmm. deeper level. Mm -hmm. So I do have another question. (laughs) Um, So when it comes to, I guess, people with cancer or tumors or anything like that, um, I guess, what have you personally seen from the people that you've worked with, with um, that issue? or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm not a, I'm not a cancer doctor. I've certainly mm-hmm. seen patients with cancer who have cancer and, and mm-hmm. those kinds of issues. And, you know, when, when our physiology is here, unfortunately, and that stress hormone hits the immune system, it does suppress the part of the immune system that detects cancer and kills off cancerous cells before it causes a problem. Right mm-hmm. now, <clears throat> if I've got somebody who's here um, and they're suppressing their immune system, these patients are not going to do as well with, say, chronic infections, mm-hmm. right? Autoimmune stuff, but cancer as well, mm-hmm. right? Now, cancer is this rather heterogeneous kind of category, right? There's lots of different cancers mm-hmm. and different cancers will respond uh, differently to a variety of treatments, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but when we, I'm always kind of optimizing this physiology, no matter whether a patient, a cancer patient is going a purely allopathic route, 
right? Whether it's surgery, chemo, radiation, or they're doing a mix or they're going completely alternative, shifting this physiology can still optimize the potential, right? For the body to be able to, to heal from that. Hmm. Do you serve patients locally or do you um, telecommunicate with patients? The vast majority of my patients are all over the country, all over the country. We used to do international, but logistically that's hard. Even before uh, kind of the pandemic shut yeah. everybody down and everybody went to Zoom, for years we were doing Zoom at probably only about 30% of my patients would actually come into the office um, and work, uh, work directly with us. So, yeah. you know, it was pretty easy transition to transition to Zoom and just consult with patients. So I have patients all over the country. Yeah. The challenge is most, um, it's hard to find people who kind of specialize in this thing. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. you know, while it's not ideal to do things over Zoom, mm -hmm. it's better than the, what, what they've got locally. Mm -hmm. Now, right. I want all my patients to have a good local doctor. Good local doctors can be uh, kind of hard to find right. sometimes, yeah. right? So I'm happy to consult yeah. you know really with anybody but we see patients all over um we used to have patients actually come the whole program that i run for this it's based on the success of the patients i had um when people would come and stay with us right so we have a guest house mm -hmm. on our property and people come from all over the country um a couple weeks a couple months even to get treated for this mm -hmm. and by the time we would send those patients home they were already feeling better mm -hmm not fixed. Again, mm -hmm. you don't fix this in eight weeks, but mm -hmm. they're feeling this shift and they're right. moving in the right direction. And by the time they leave, they had a plan, mm -hmm. right? And they had an understanding of the plan and they had tools to implement the plan. Mm -hmm. So not only would they get better quicker, but they would stay better longer. Mm -hmm. And ultimately that's my idea of healing, right? Mm -hmm. Is understand what you're dealing with to get ahead of it and then go live your life and stay away from doctors. Mm -hmm. including me. <laughs> <laughs> now, the biggest problem, right? The biggest mm -hmm. problem was that most people don't have the resources of time, energy, or money, of course, right. to get this kind of level yeah. of intensive care. Mm -hmm. So it was a while back, I started working on a program with the hope that I could duplicate those more successful outcomes so that those patients, um, you know, that those patients had when they would come here, but so that people wouldn't have to come here to make that happen. And that's what's kind of turned into this six-month program. But I'll still consult kind of a la carte mm -hmm. with patients as well, but I'll see patients from anywhere. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if someone wants to get in touch with you, how do they go about that? Mm -hmm. uh, my website. So website, social media website is drandrewneville.com. And, you know, look for us on Facebook and yes. Twitter and YouTube. And I've got tons of videos and there's kind of a big push with regard to that. I've got a free, I've got a mini course where I, I've, I've kind of explained some of this stuff to patients. Yes. I've even got a free uh, course called Adrenal Healing Jumpstart where people can get actually some of these specific kind of actionable um, types of things like talking about um, how to stimulate that rest and digest, talking about the diet and the salt and those kinds of things, right? So, you know, trying to kind of get as much of this information out as possible. Um, yeah, so... That's awesome. Google, Google Action Google. tools for people mm -hmm. to start yeah. before they can I even mean, get in touch yeah. with you. That is really, yeah. that's wonderful to hear. I mean, you just yeah. don't get Thank that. You. You Thank know, you. With anything. Okay. Yeah. All mm -hmm. right. We're going to take a short break. And when we come back, we'll enter our next segment, Canter Banter. Do you love horses and live the equestrian lifestyle? Be sure to check out our brand new blog at www.yourhorsefarm.com. We publish three posts per week and feature a free printable equine checklist every month. Yourhorsefarm.com is a great equine online resource, so be sure to share with all the horse lovers in your life. And remember, laugh much and ride often. This podcast is brought to you by Ram Horse Fencing and Stalls, the one-stop shop for your horse farm. Ram is family-owned and operated and has been in business for over 30 years. We welcome you to call in and speak with an expert about your next project today at 866-653-8984. Again, that's 866-653-8984. Okay, so I appreciate you asking me uh, about canter banter. I have no experience with horses. My wife had to remind me that I've been on a horse once, <laughs> some way, way back when, in and around my wedding. But I do, you. if you give me a little latitude with this, I do have a story about a, a distant relative of the horse that I'll share with you. Okay. My favorite book on this subject uh, of adrenal fatigue and kind of the ravages of stress is a book uh, written by... Um, a neuroscientist and primatologist, Robert Sapolsky. The name of the book is called Why Zebras 
don't get ulcers. <laughs> it's a great book. It explains a bunch of things in, in different ways. The, the punchline of that is zebras don't worry about lions. Mm -hmm. They just deal with the lion once it's there, right? Mm -hmm. We humans, right? We have this very evolved brain, mm -hmm. right? Our frontal cortex and everything. We can create lions and threats and tigers mm -hmm. and things. Oh, yeah. We can create them in our brain, right? Even if they're not necessarily there, Yeah. right? So the idea that I try to share with all my patients is we want to be the zebra, right? <laughs> be present in your environment, deal with the threat if it comes, right? But then if the threat isn't there, mm -hmm. Again, move on, right? Mm -hmm. Again, be present, right? Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the, uh, the the thing that I share with my patients is to is to to be the zebra. There you go. And I know you can't ride zebras; they're smaller and all that stuff. So it's, <laughs> it doesn't really it doesn't really <laughs> ride like a horse. It, that's good. No, that's good. No, that's, that's great. Good way to think of it. What too, was that kids show? Racing stripes. <laughs> <laughs> We hope you enjoyed listening to our podcast and encourage you to share with all your equestrian family and friends. You can tune into the Late Night Riders podcast show every Friday night. Each episode will be uploaded exclusively on YouTube where you can subscribe to our channel to stay up to date with all of our latest shows. Do you have a topic you'd like us to discuss? We want to hear from you. You may email us at podcast at or feel free to leave a comment below. Thank you again for listening.